Because I grew up in New Orleans. My mother worked as a daycare assistant at the Jewish Community Center. The man that I was told was my father was a carpenter and a functional alcoholic. He was abusive to my mother and I, not more than a baby herself, when she married this man, she tried her best to protect me from him. But with no life skills of her own, she did what she knew how to do. Friday was payday for him, so he would come home happy, but that was short-lived. He would go out and return a few hours later drunk and angry, yelling and fighting her. As I look back over my life, there were many people that had a hand in shining light into my darkness when I was growing up. I had just started junior high school, and in order for me to get to high school, I had to walk through the drug dealers, literally step over the hooks and the drug addicts, walk through a graveyard, then in the next block past gang members, and then go through the projects, and then come to a six-lane intersection, and it was always busy, but just beyond that was the school. Well, one day as I'm approaching this intersection, I hear this voice saying, will someone help me cross? He was in a suit. He had a cooler in the hand and a folded lawn chair in one hand and his cane in the other. Will someone help me cross, he said. People kept ignoring him, walking past him with their busy lives. We were poor, but we were busy. I don't know why poor people are so busy. <laughs> I said, I'll help you in my 13-year-old changing voice. He said, well, thank you, son. May I have your shoulder? I said, yes, sir. He said, don't trick me now. I said, no, sir, I won't. We crossed the street. I asked him where he was going. He told me that he was going to, uh, to my school to sell praline candies to the kids. So I helped him to the school, and he said, thank you. And he told me that God would bless me for my kindness. He and I became friends. We took that walk every day. I came out of school one afternoon and there he was sitting outside in that lawn chair selling praline candies, 25 cents. And I saw one of the kids try to buy candy, right? And they gave Mr. Butler a dollar and they told him it was a $5 bill. I stepped in and I said, Mr. Butler, this is a scam. Needless to say, I had a lot of enemies at that school, but it didn't matter. I was glad to do it. You see, Mr. Butler was one of the first men in my life to see me. And what made it all the more special is that he was blind. He was a point of light. One morning I was late meeting him and as I walked up to the intersection, I could see Mr. Butler standing there, not saying a word. So I tipped up behind him and I said, I said, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna wait to see what happens. He said, I know you're there, son. I said, yes, sir, I am. I said, I didn't hear you saying, will someone help me cross? He said, no, I was listening for you. I said, you were? He said, yes. Sometimes in life, son, when you pray and you've said all you can say, all you have to do is stand and wait and listen. What a point of light he was. There are many people in this world that are wanting, waiting, saying, asking, begging, hoping. Will someone help me cross? We all have the power to be a point of life.